video we're going to talk about the amplitude and the initial phase of harmonic oscillators and how we can determine those from simple starting conditions. Now to begin we're first going to have a look at exactly what amplitude and phase are and when we first mentioned these we had these as constants that came out of solving the equation of motion. Now we know what the amplitude is, it's the maximum displacement from equilibrium and that's a pretty simple concept to grasp. Um, the initial phase is a little bit more complicated but we can see how both can be determined by how we set the system in motion. So if we look at a simple mass spring system here, if I pull it down and release it from rest then it oscillates at a particular frequency but when I pull it down and I release it at rest at time t equals zero the displacement is the maximum displacement of the system and so that tells you two things it tells you the amplitude and it also tells you the initial phase of the system now if I set this identical system moving in a different way so here what I've got is I've got it at the equilibrium position and then I'm going to hit it so that it moves downwards. Now there at time t equals zero it's going to have an initial velocity but its initial displacement is zero. Now it might have ended up with the same amplitude if I'd have hit it with the correct uh, uh, hardness however its phase at the start would have been very different because it would have a zero displacement. And similarly, you know, if I pull it down a short way and release it, I get a low amplitude. If I pull it a larger way down and release it, I get a large amplitude. So it should be pretty clear from that that both the amplitude and the initial phase of the system depend on how the system is set in motion. So to see how those are determined and exactly what we mean by phase, let's have a look in a bit more mathematical detail. So here we have the mathematical expression for the displacement of our oscillator. So this is x as a function of t. Um, and we can see how it varies. It's the standard cosine function. Now, we already know that the amplitude is just this quantity here, this uh, a. And this is the maximum displacement uh, from equilibrium simply because this cosine term here can only vary between minus 1 to plus 1 and so the maximum value that cosine can have is plus 1 and that gives us the maximum displacement A which is the amplitude and as we just demonstrated the maximum displacement depends on how you set the system in motion so this is why it's one of the constants of integration. So where is the phase? What is the phase? So the phase is this entire term here. And so what you can see is that the phase includes this component here that is why the phase increases with time. It shows that the phase increases linearly with time and the rate of increase depends here on omega, which is the angular frequency of the system. Now we measure the phase in radians because we treat it like an angle. However, it's not a real angle. There's no point in a mass spring system where you can get out your protractor and go measure an angle and the angle will then tell you what the phase of the oscillator is. Instead, the phase is an abstract concept, but the reason it's useful to think of it as an angle is because um, if we look at how an angle behaves here, right, if we've got some angle, Right? If we go through a um, increase the angle by 2 pi, um, then after we've increased the angle by 2 pi, we're exactly back to wherever we started. And that's the same with an oscillating system. As time increases, after some period of time, it's back to where it started, because that's the definition of an oscillator. If it doesn't go back to where it started, you haven't got an oscillator. So the reason we use a phase is, uh, as an angle is because 
just like an angle, um, after the oscillator has, has um, gone through one of its cycles, it ends up back to where it started. And so we call this a phase change of 2 pi. So after the oscillator has changed its phase by a value of 2 pi, just like an angle, which has changed by 2 pi, it will get back to exactly where it started again. And so the phase of an oscillator is a way of expressing how far through the cycle of its motion an oscillator is by sort of analogy with an angle. And so this entire term here gives you the phase of the oscillator, and it's only this phi term here that gives you the initial phase. And so, of course, that depends on where in the cycle you start the oscillator, and that's why it's a constant of integration. So let's have a look at um, the effect of phase on oscillators. So here we can see two mass spring systems that are oscillating with the same amplitude. And we've also set them up so that they have the same angular frequency and the same initial phase. So they're oscillating perfectly in sync and there's no phase difference between them. Now, if we change the initial phase of one of the oscillators and we make it uh, pi over 2 different from the uh, initial phase of the other oscillator, then we can see now that the two oscillators are maintaining a fixed phase difference between them. And when the phase difference is pi over 2, we have one of the oscillators is at the equilibrium position when the second oscillator is at the maximum distance from equilibrium and vice versa as they go through their cycles. And that's because it takes quarter of a cycle to get from the maximum displacement back to equilibrium and a phase difference of pi over 2 is a quarter of a complete uh, oscillation, where an oscillation it corresponds to a phase change of 2 pi. So pi over 2 is a quarter of a 2 pi phase change. Now, if we increase the phase difference further, and we go up to a phase difference of pi, then we can now see that the two oscillators are what we say is perfectly out of phase. So when one is up, the other one is down, and when they both meet in equilibrium, they're both heading in opposite directions. So they're exactly out of phase with one another. Now if we bring them back in phase with each other, and now what we're going to do is we're going to change the frequency of one of them with respect to the other. And when we do that, what we can see is that the phase difference between the oscillators now starts to continuously change. So at one point they may appear to be almost in phase, and then as time goes by that phase difference increases until it appears that they're almost out of phase, and then it carries on increasing until they get back in phase, or rather the phase difference between them becomes 2 pi, which is the same as if there was no phase difference between them. And so we can see that it's continuously changing with time when they have different frequencies. So what we're looking at here is an extension of the system we just looked at with two mass spring systems. We're now looking at six mass spring systems. And these are all oscillating with the same uh, frequency and the same initial phase. And what we're going to do is we're going to change things so that the initial phase increases in equal steps from one oscillator to the other. So if the first oscillator has a zero initial phase, uh, then the second one would have uh, an initial phase of, say, 0.1. The third one would have an initial phase of 0.2. The fourth one would have an initial phase of 0.3, and so on and so forth, so that the phase difference between any two adjacent oscillators is exactly the same. Now when we do that, you can see that the oscillators get out of phase, but they keep a fixed phase relationship between them because they're all oscillating at the same phase. And as we increase it a little bit more, a different type of phenomenon occurs, and here you can see a wave. We're going to talk about waves later in the course, but this was just a nice way to show you that really all a wave is, is a system of connected oscillators where each oscillator has a different initial phase to the oscillator next to it. And that is literally what a wave is.
So now let's go back and looking uh, to start looking at oscillators again and we're going to have a look at how we determine the initial phase and amplitude from some simple initial conditions. So here's a typical sort of problem uh, that we often encounter. So you have a mass spring system which has an angular frequency of omega, it's pulled down by a distance of 10 centimeters and it's released at rest. What is the expression for its displacement y as a function of time t? So we can write down the solution to our mechanical oscillator that's undergoing simple harmonic motion, which we know this mass spring system will do. And so here's our solution. So what we need to do is we need to use the initial conditions to find a value for a and find a value for phi. So what we do is we say, well, at time t equals 0, then y of 0 is equal to 10 centimeters, and this is equal to a times the cosine of phi. And now we have to use the other bit of information in the question, and that is that the system is released at rest. Now, when it's released at rest, that means that this is going to be it's at the maximum displacement because we release it at rest and so what's going to happen is it's going to accelerate under the net force acting on it. Well, if we pulled it down from below the uh, um, equilibrium position, then when we release it, the net force is going to move it back towards equilibrium. So it will never go further away from equilibrium than our position now. And so we know immediately that if this is the maximum displacement, then the amplitude here has to be 10 centimeters. So simply by using the information in the question, we can determine that the amplitude is 10 centimeters. But what about the initial phase? Well, so what I've got here is I've got 10 centimeters is equal to 10 centimeters, because that's the amplitude, times the cosine of phi. And so that tells me that the cosine of phi has to be equal to 1, and that of course is going to happen when phi is 0. And so now I've used the information in the question to determine both the amplitude and the initial phase, which is 0. And so my answer here is going to be 10 centimeters for the amplitude times the cosine of omega t, and that's the question solved. But that's not the only solution to this question. I chose to use cosine. Supposing instead I'd chosen to use a times the sine of omega t plus phi. That's a valid expression for the solution, another way of writing the solution to a simple harmonic oscillator. Now, had I chosen this way of writing it, then what I would have ended up with is at time t equals zero, I've got my displacement is equal to the amplitude, but now I would have sine of phi here. And the solution, I'd still have the requirement that the sine of phi be equal to 1, but the sine of phi is equal to 1 when phi is equal to pi over 2. And so in this way of writing it, my solution would have been uh, 10 centimeters for the amplitude times the sine of omega t um, now plus pi over 2. So what you get for the initial phase depends on whether you start with sine or cosine, but in the case where the oscillator is released at rest, it's quite easy uh, to find it and solve the problem. Now here we've got a problem that's very similar, almost identical to the one we had before. We have our mass spring system, it has an angular frequency omega, but now the initial condition is different. We're starting at the equilibrium position with a downwards velocity. So we're told the amplitude of the motion is 10 centimeters, so we don't have to work that out. But we're asked now for what is the displacement y as a function of time t. Well, we've got a simple harmonic oscillator, so we're still going to have our function look something like this, a cosine omega t plus phi, and we're told what a is. So we already know this. The question is, what is the value of phi? Well, what we do is we put in our initial conditions. At time t equals 0, we know that y is equal to 0, and that is equal to a cosine, and of course omega t is 0 because t is 0, so it's just a cosine phi. 
So what we want, we know that a is not zero, so we need a value for phi such that the cosine of phi gives us zero, and that is provides two possible solutions. And that is that phi is plus or minus pi over two. Both of those work equally well. So the question now is, which one of those is the right one? Well, what we have to do is we have to define a positive direction. In the previous question, we took positive as downwards. So let us use that again and take downwards as the positive direction. So this means we have a positive initial velocity and we will move in a positive direction, which will give us a positive displacement. So what we now need to do is have a little look at our cast rule. So remember the uh, cast rule that determines which trig functions are positive in each of the four quadrants. So what we have here is if we have uh, omega t is zero, then our initial phase is going to be phi. And that means that either we're going to be along this line here pointing downwards if we're at minus pi over two, or we're going to be along this line here pointing upwards if we're at initial phase of plus pi over two. And then as t increases, the phase is going to increase, and so we're going to move in this direction if we start at plus pi over 2, or in this direction if we start at minus pi over 2. Now in this quadrant, we see that sine is the only positive function, which means that our cosine term will be negative, and that would give us a negative displacement, but we're moving in a positive direction, so this one is wrong. Right? We cannot, this gives us the wrong sign for the initial displacements. Whereas here, we are starting at minus pi over 2, and as we increase, so that our phase angle gets smaller, then we are in the cosine quadrant, and so that will give us a positive value for cosine, which means that we'll get a positive value for y, and that's exactly what we want because we're moving in the positive direction. So what this tells us is that our final solution is y of t is equal to, well, our amplitude is 10 centimeters because we're given that, cosine of omega t minus pi over 2 because we have a positive displacement shortly after time t equals 0. So now we've seen how to solve the second type of simple initial conditions. So now we've seen how to determine both the amplitude and the initial phase from some simple starting conditions, either when we displace an object and release it at rest, or it's at equilibrium and we hit it and we're told what the amplitude is. In general, we can determine the amplitude and the initial phase for any arbitrary set of starting conditions, but because we have two unknowns, the amplitude and the initial phase, we need two pieces of information and it's not going to come as a surprise that those two pieces of information are going to be the initial displacement and the initial velocity of the oscillator. And so we can actually solve that for generic starting conditions, but to do that we first need to look at the velocity of the system, and that's what we'll be doing in the next video. Yeah.